is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every All sufficient sacrifice So freely given such a price Bought our redemption Soul 
Roger, do you think I'd make a soldier? Do you think I'd make a soldier? Soldier of the cross. Why don't you sing it with me, one? We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Soldier. Good morning. Good morning. Whew, what a blessing that is. Thanks, Roger. Um, I'm glad you're here today. What a blessing it is to have so many here. First of all, happy Mother's Day. You all had a mother, right? Happy Mother's Day. We want to show mom some love, right? Because you're here today, and maybe you're here today because of your mother and, and what she's instilled in you. So give thanks for that. If you have an opportunity, call your mother. If not, uh, make sure you, you pray. What a blessing that is. Um, this morning, because it is Mother's Day, we have um, chocolate roses on a long stem. They're in the back. There's three vases. Feel free to grab one. Uh, I know, chocolate. There's two kisses in there, so there's one for each of you. Okay. What a blessing that is. That's courtesy of our, 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 our outreach team. They've been so busy. And thank you for their work. So this morning you've landed at Fort Dodge, uh, Trinity United Methodist Church. I'm glad you're here. I know we have folks online. If they could type in a, a good morning or a hello, then I know who's with us. And if they want to get started on um, prayer concerns or blessings or burdens, that would be great. We want to include them as well. Um, do we have any announcements before we get started? Ruth, Rachel. Next Saturday is um, our turn to help with the Beacon of Hope. And we need, we're going to have like a pilot like we did before. And uh, so if you could bring a main dish or a side dish or a dessert or something, anything really, and um, it's, you don't have to go in or anything. Just bring it at 4.30 next Saturday. And they will have men there to pick it up from you from your car and take it down. Just make sure you bring it in a um, non-returnable pan because it's not guaranteed you would get your pan back. So um, if you could either let the office know or text me and let me know so we know we have you know, enough of everything. Otherwise, I'll... Um, make what we're short of, and there have been other people who said whatever you need. So um, that's next Saturday, and it should be delivered at 4.30. If you can't get it there, <coughs> let me know, and I'll make sure it gets there. Okay, Beacon of Hope drive through dinner. Um, we're providing the meal, driving through at the Beacon, and they'll just take it out of your vehicle. It's pretty slick. Just don't expect the pan to come back. Um, are there more events going on? Any other activities? I know there's some for the screens. There we go. <laughs> it's just magical how that happens. Um, it is Mother's Day, so don't forget that. Quilters will be in our building on Tuesday, teen parents on Tuesday afternoon. Confirmation and youth will be on Wednesday. Um, I'm going to tell you, confirmation and youth are going to do some really cool things um, this week, so um, make sure you, you let me know you're coming so I can plan for that, but we're going to have some fun. Laura Stover's involved, and she's got lots of cool ideas, so she's going to be shining this week. She's actually going to be shining a little later on this morning. Thanks for being here. Um, Bible studies continue on Thursday morning. Um, they've finished Romans, and we're moving on to 1 Corinthians. Just makes sense. Let's work our way through the Bible. Um, next week, uh, or the 13th and 15th, we have our work day, and I know it sounds like three days, and it does, because it is, 
I want to make sure that we have an opportunity to do the work that you guys want to do. Saturdays doesn't always work for folks, so we just said, let's do three days. Come when you can, do what you can, grab a friend, grab a partner. It's more fun when you have somebody with you. So it's three days of work. If you don't know what to do, holler, I'll find something for you to do. <laughs> Beacon of Hope meal is in there. Um, next week we will be celebrating our seniors, our graduating seniors. Um, and we're hoping that they'll all be here and they'll be able to share what God is, is leading them to do next. Uh, we have a finance meeting and then on, on Tuesday night. On Wednesday night on the 19th, we have CPR and AED training. Um, anybody ever have to do CPR on somebody? Yeah, see, it's good you knew what you were doing. Anybody have to, ever have to use an AED thing? Okay, let's hope you'd never have to, but it's that training that I want you to have so you know where it's at, how to use it, and how to call 911. I know that sounds kind of odd, but sometimes when our emotions and our adrenaline is running, we don't know what to do. And this training will help you feel more comfortable about having to call 911 or using a defibrillator or, or even doing CPR. So... Please sign up for that. We do have a minimum number for that class, and I'm hoping that um, it's just overflowing and we can offer a second one. Uh, baccalaureate is also on the 19th. We have an SPRC meeting on the 20th, and Fort Dodge graduation is on the 23rd. Now, our Caring Ministries team is um, gearing up for uh, another uh, adventure, and we're seeking volunteers to be a part of that team. So if you like to talk to people, you like to visit with people, you like to check in with people, this is a great team to be on. Um, it's about, <laughs> quit looking at each other like that, like, oh, that's you, They're pointing fingers back there. <laughs> yeah, you like to talk, I saw that. <laughs> but it, it's about loving and caring for our neighbors and, and checking in and praying with them. So if you think you could do those things, come join us. If you don't think you can, we'll teach you how. We have a couple of training sessions scheduled for June. Um, just call the church office, call Mark or Rayon. They'd be happy to, to encourage you and, and convince you this is where you needed. The outreach team is continuing to um, do some of their work with uh, Gatorade and granola bars. Um, in January, we collected Gatorade and granola bars for Unity Point staff, um, the clinics as well as a hospital. And now we want to reach out to those in the long-term care facilities, they're doing amazing work and we just want to show appreciation for them as well. So if you're out grocery shopping this week, add that to your list, will you? Gatorade and granola bars and drop them off at the church or um, just call and say, hey, I'm here. Can you come get this? I'll come get it. Um, we're also in need of someone to help organize the Frontier Days Parade. Um, anybody ever go to the parade? Okay, keep, who thinks Trinity should be represented this year? Yeah, so I'll see you guys afterwards. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Quick, next slide. <laughs> Let's pray, shall we? Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day and for all the blessings that it holds. We give you thanks for the number of things that we're doing and for all the people that it takes. Lord, join our hearts to be united in your love and with you, doing your work, doing your will. Lord, just send the Holy Spirit today to be with us, to lead us, to guide us. Lord, we want nothing more than others to join us on this mission we call life, in the ministry we call Trinity, and in the love that we call Jesus. Lord, send the Holy Spirit to be with us. May all that we do and say and sing and pray bring honor and glory to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you join me in the responsive reading? It's on your screens. Yeah, yours too. We come with joy to the celebration of God's love. We come with hope to this witness to God's power. We come with a willingness to proclaim God's presence to all. Our opening song is hymn number 617, I Come With Joy, 617.
Acts 10, 44 through 48. <clears throat> Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers that came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the, gen the Gentiles too. For they had heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, can anyone object, object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterward, Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days. 1 John 5, 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children, too. We know, he, we know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's son by his baptism in water and by shedding his blood on the cross, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the spirit who is truth confirms it in his testimony. The word of God for the people of God. Our special music this morning is... Um of Lenny Pratt and Greta Pratt. Thank you for sharing your talents.
What talent. We are raising up some mighty talent, aren't we? What a blessing. Thanks, ladies, for, sh for sharing your talents and your gifts. So they were in here yesterday and practicing on the big piano. And I said, you know what? It sounded just like when I was little and singing that, those songs in church. Definitely recognizable. Thank you for that. Uh, we come to the time for glory sightings. It's where we get to talk about how God is a part of our lives. So, we're, so I ask the question, where do you see glimpses of God? Where, how has God been a part of your life? The tulips at Pella. The, the tulips at Pella. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, the rain that we have in the fields and the, the rain that we got, the flowers, the tulips, and the gift of these two young ladies. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any other glimpses of God's goodness or God's glory? We were in Sioux City yesterday to meet our oldest son and his family after their daughter graduated from uh, Vermilion South Dakota College. And now this afternoon, we have our other three are going to all be coming to eat dinner with us. So Very we'll nice. Very nice. So you got to go to Sioux City and hook up with family after a college graduation. And now more kids are coming to your place today. What a blessing. What a blessing. The gift of family. Any others? Okay, how about prayers? Is there someone we need to be lifting up in prayer or something we need to pray about? Uh, one of my uh, neighbors uh, is uh, kind of going blind in okay. both of his eyes. So, uh, uh, I hope that he uh, can see once again. Absolutely. So Ryan shared that um, one of his neighbors is losing the loss of his eyesight. Um, so we just pray that he can hang on to that as long as possible. Gracious Lord. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there was an incident at First Baptist Church last night, and we're going to pray for those folks. All right, gracious Lord. Roger. Uh, update on Baby Oakland that you all have been praying so hard for, and, and just the results we got to see last night of some of the blessings of God. She was at our house last night, and before where the, the, the growth of the tumor got to be this, about the size of a tennis ball, was forcing her eyes to just look down because of the pressure. Last night she was looking around and when you'd smile at her, she'd smile. She's talking up the storm. And, and so just blessings and thanks and continued prayers for baby Oakland, my uh, nephew's baby. Okay, continued prayers for baby Oakland, but oh, what miracles, what miracles. Any other glimpses of God's goodness, God's grace, God's glory, prayers for others? Prayers for yourself. Well, let's go to our Lord in prayer then, shall we? Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day and for all the blessings that it holds. Lord, being able to see um, the rain and, the, and what the rain does, it brings out the flowers, it brings out the tractors in the fields. Lord, what a blessing it is. We definitely need the rain. We give you thanks for that. Lord, we ask you to um, hold those folks close who are mourning and grieving the loss of loved ones. Lord, I know this is a difficult time. Lord, just meet them in their grief and comfort them. Lord, we have many folks who are um, dealing with some health issues, whether it's uh, trying to figure out whether they should see a doctor or running some tests or work on the plan, or maybe we're in the healing phases. Lord, we just ask you to place your healing hand on them and just to help them to be renewed and restored, ready to go again. 
Lord, if we can't be 110%, help us to be 95, 90. But use that 95 or 90% to honor you. That's all we want to do is to be able to love on you and love on our neighbors. Lord, I know there's more. There's always more. So we take some time this morning to give you the stuff that just won't come out our, our lips. Lord, incline your ear to us and hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for knowing our hearts, for hearing our prayers. Lord, we give you thanks for answering those prayers. Lord, grant us peace and grant us patience while we wait. We know that you answer in your way and in your time. As frustrating as that might be for us, we know that your answered prayers are even better than we can imagine. And for that, we give you thanks. Lord, we know that when you sent Jesus to be with us, he called those disciples one by one and he said, come. Come and follow. Come and see. And as they gathered, they got to bear witness to so many things that Jesus was doing. They heard him preach. They heard him teach. They got to see the miracles. How cool is that? As Jesus was teaching, the disciples said one day, Lord, will you teach us to pray? And Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 2130. It's in the skinny little black faith we sing books, if you have those at home. Um, if not, the words are on the screen. Just make up your own melody. 2130, the summons.
come now to the gospel lesson and we'll have the children's message after that, the young disciples message. So if you want to send those little ones on down, that'd be great. Our gospel lesson comes to us from John chapter 15, starting in verse 9. I have loved you even as a father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I obey my father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the father told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. The word of God for the people of God. Okay, young disciples, come on. Now, you guys might not quite understand this, but all the big kids out there will get it. I'm Aunt B. <laughs> now, Aunt B didn't have any children, but boy, did she do a good job of raising Opie up, right? Yes. yes, and we can all have those same qualities of Aunt B without this costume, by the way. <laughs> anyway, you guys, good morning. My real name is Laura, but today I'm just going to be Aunt B. And so I'm asking you guys, what's the buzz? Anything happening? Are you excited to be here? Thank you both for playing this morning. That was so beautiful. Made me think of when I took piano lessons too. And my mom talked me into playing the piano for church too. <laughs> and it's a lovely gift. <laughs> all right, so I've got some, a little gift for all of you. Would you mind sharing a little, a little package of seeds with each of you? Okay, can you come right up here and sit? There we go. Yes. A little package of seeds. Now, why do you think Aunt B would give you some flower seeds? Who's smart? Who knows? To plant them. That's right, to absolutely plant them. And why would a bee want to have some flowers? What do you think? Oh, you're, you're on a roll. Because they drink the pollen. That's right. If you can plant these seeds, you're going to make bees very happy. And then what are bees going to do with the pollen, everybody? Make it into? Honey. Thanks, honey. That's right. <laughs> and do we like honey, any of us? Does any of the big kids like honey? Yeah. It's so, how would you describe honey? What kind of, what would you say, Lenny? How do you describe honey? Or do you like it at all? Have you tasted it before? Okay. Does sweet. Yeah, so that makes us all sweethearts after we... We eat that honey, right? Oh, I'm just full of it this morning, aren't I? <laughs> By the way, as sweet as honey is, it reminds us that we can taste and see that the Lord is good. Yum, right? Now, if I would have had one more hand, I would have brought some honey up here too, but I'm just running out of hands. Okay, so if we're going to plant our seeds, what do we need to do to make sure they grow? What's one thing? Sunlight. Sunlight. And isn't it fun that sun can be spelled S-U-N or S-O-N, right? So hopefully we have the S-O-N, God's sunlight in us, as well as the great sun that God made. Okay, so we need that. Now here's some hints. What else do we need to do the seeds? Yes. Water them. Water them. 
Yes, where there is sunshine in my, there is sunshine in my soul today. That's my watering can. Okay, now, what do you think about this? You two, what will be a good idea for this one? Why don't you take it out for me really quick? Yeah, what do you think you could do with that? Maybe, yes, kind of rake the ground, maybe pull out some dirt. some dirt or some weeds that might try to take over. Isn't that a fun tool? Right, yeah, you could do some serious fun with that and get your seeds planted. Okay, so we seem to have all the necessary things, right? It'll make sense. Now we have packages of seeds for all of you to take home with you today because we wanna take it one step further. Yes, we wanna make beautiful flowers for the bees and for us to enjoy, but we wanna thank all the people that planted seeds in us, right? That we're here this morning, that we're coming to understand who Jesus is. So as we plant and take care of our seeds, all of us, we need to think of people and friends and neighbors and classmates that maybe don't know Jesus. And if we start praying for them while we're taking care of our seeds, that's going to get their hearts and minds ready to receive a time that you might have to invite them to come to vacation Bible school or go to confirmation or church camp or on a mission trip with us. Those are ways then our friends that don't know anything about the faith can come to learn about Jesus through each of you, through each of you. You know that. There's a neighbor, there's somebody you've seen, maybe there's somebody in your family that you love and care about, but they don't know who Jesus is. So man, this is an important job to do, isn't it, today? Not only just plant that little, uh-oh, do you need to go down? Okay, can I help you? Can I give you a hand? There we go, you are doing so great. Yes, you got the seeds though, so you can, you can plant them. Yes, okay, thank you. We have lots and lots to do, and it all needs to start with prayer, right? We don't know who we're supposed to talk to yet or who we're going to be thinking about, but let's pray that God will help us. Okay, so repeat after me. You ready? Dear God, thank you for planting seeds in me. For planting seeds in me. Help me to figure out who I need to plant seeds into. Help me to pray and read my Bible, come to church, and be around other believers. I pray it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for helping me, everybody. And I'll be excited to hear how your flowers are growing. Okay, so I like planting the seeds we call fruit snacks. <laughs> uh, you needed one more hand. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to leave these up here. You guys can come get them after church, okay? No tricks, you get them. Okay, um, thanks, Laura. What a great message. So this is the last um, Sunday in this sermon series called Belong, Believe, Behave. Belong, behave, believe, I don't know. Have, have you enjoyed this sermon series? Yes? Okay, good. Um, I think it's important that we um, not only have our own theories or philosophies of, of how people come to know Christ, but um, we listen to the scriptures. And we've seen that these three things are so crucial that we need to belong, we need to believe, we need to behave. In what order, I still don't know, but I'm going to tell you that it is so important that somebody, that people belong to something. And of course, I would prefer you belong to Trinity United Methodist Church. This is a great family. If people are seeking and wondering what the church is all about, feel free to continue to ask questions, continue to, to join us. Through worship, through messages like that one, um, we're going to figure out what it means to be a follower of Jesus of course, if you have questions, feel free to give me a call, send me a text, um, send a pigeon if you need to. We'll get together. We'll connect. But I think it's important that we belong. And how many people, are there people in your life or in your circles, in your um, work environment, in your circle of friends that don't know Jesus? 
then they're going to get to know Jesus through you. They're, I can guarantee you they're watching you. They're listening to you. But it might take an invitation to come to a Bible study or to come to church or to come to a potluck or some other activity that we have going on. Maybe you're going to be in charge of the parade and you need their help. You can share Jesus with them you're, because you're going to already be fasting and praying, right? If you're in charge and you're going to help them hear what that means to celebrate what the work, the work we do at Trinity. Throughout the scriptures in this sermon series, we've heard about the disciples or looked at the disciples and their doubt, their unbelief. The ones who were in the know didn't know and how interesting that was. I, I don't know everything and I'm not going to complain or I will not claim to know everything, but I'm willing to look for answers. So if you have questions and I say, I don't know, I'm also going to follow that up with, but I'd be happy to discover the answers with you. So the disciples, um, as when they went to the empty tomb, they didn't know what happened to Jesus. The ones that were in the know didn't have a clue, and that's okay. They quickly learned they quickly discovered that Jesus did raise from the grave, that the grave couldn't hold him. And they quickly discerned what happened. And then as they encountered Jesus, they doubted whether that was truly Jesus. They saw him eat a piece of fish and it went not to the floor, but it went to his belly. So as they doubted and they discerned, they came to realize that Jesus was with them. And that's the one thing I want you to hear today, that Jesus is with you. No matter what, Jesus is with you. As we looked at the scriptures, um, we discovered so much more. Even, even during Holy Communion, that ritual that it, they, the Jewish folks still celebrate today, Jesus interrupted that scripture or interrupted that ritual to pick up a loaf of bread, to break it, to bless it, to share it with the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. And when the supper was over, he took that cup of wine and he again gave thanks. He shared it with the disciples and said, this is my blood which is given for you. All of that we know is Holy Communion was an interruption of their traditional celebration. The same celebration they have every year, even this year. Um, the celebration of being released from bondage, released from captivity. They're still waiting for the Messiah, the one true Messiah. We celebrate Jesus. They're still waiting. Others in this community are just waiting to be asked, waiting to be invited. And that's our job, to invite them into a relationship with us and into a relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, those little interruptions that we call glory sightings, those are all about Jesus. Those are opportunities where you can share with your friends and your coworkers, your family and your neighbors, the work that Jesus is doing, how Jesus shows up in unexpected places and in unexpected times. Those little interruptions are those glimpses and opportunities for you to share Jesus with others. So in our scriptures, um, okay, so back in the 50s and 60s, when people showed up for church, they were careful not to sit in somebody else's pew. And, then they, and if they lasted a couple of weeks, then they, showed, they were invited to a new membership class. And then after a few weeks, then they had the right training and right belief. They were invited to um, join the church. And that model worked with, for a while, but I don't think it still works today. I think we need to help invite people and help them feel like they belong. When you belong to this church, you belong to something more than yourself. You belong to the family of God. As people are baptized, as they confess their faith in, in Jesus Christ, we know they belong. But I want people to feel like they belong from the get-go. From the time they open these doors, that they're, they, they're welcomed and that they belong. We, are, we already have a couple of people that have said they want to join this church. So if God has been laying that on your heart, tugging on, on your heart to say, be a part of this. Please let me know you want to join this church. And in a few weeks, we will receive new members on a Sunday morning. Saturday night, too. We even have Saturday night folks. Belong to something more than you have ever belonged to before. It's not the same as some of the community-minded groups. We are all about building community, building our connection, building our relationships, 
And then we're, we reach out and we go out into the community to share the love of Christ. As we heard in our scriptures, you got to love. That's my commandment, that you love others. When Peter was um, doing his thing, he was trying to hold that, that believer's class, or believe, hold that class where um, people were taught about the scriptures. Peter, I love Peter. He's doing God's work, right? It's that behavior. He's doing what God asked him to do. But in the middle of it, the Holy Spirit is working. And the Holy Spirit starts talking to people and telling them and speak, they're speaking in other languages and it's kind of wild. And Peter's like, well, gosh, if the Holy Spirit's already here, let's just go ahead and baptize them, folks. And I'm thinking that's kind of funny. I thought it was funny because, again, Jesus interrupts. Peter had a plan. He had a discipleship pathway and he knew, how to, he knew what his role was. And the Holy Spirit showed up and shook up everything and said, well, let's, Peter finally said, let's just roll with this. Let's just baptize them. Is there anyone who can't hold back the baptismal waters? No, let's just baptize them into the faith and into the family. That would be the equivalent of... Um, Let's see, when uh, someone comes to our country to live, uh, someone from another foreign country, they come and they live and they say, I want to be a citizen of the United States, right? You're familiar with that process? They have to go before a judge and they're given instructions. They have to learn these materials. They're going to take a test. They have to know about our constitution and our, our country's history. And then they go back, take the test, and then a judge swears them in and says, you can now, you'll take an oath to uphold our country and our values and you can now be a United States citizen. Is that the process, pretty much? Okay. So the, what happened to Peter in our scriptures today is the equivalent of the courtroom is full, the judge comes in and starts congratulating people, saying, welcome to the United States. I'm glad you're here. You are now a member of the United States. That totally messed with Peter's plan. That would totally mess with the court system because people would be backtracking, trying to figure out how to get them passports and certificates and what happened to the training, right? That's exactly what Peter said. What happened to the training? But Peter was wise enough to know that when the Holy Spirit moves, you just roll with it. And when God is moving, we roll with that too. So whatever's going on in your lives, recognize that sometimes Jesus is going to interrupt. The Holy Spirit's going to show up. And we're just going to give up and go. So if the Holy Spirit's telling you to go, go. And I think I'm getting a cue. I got to go. But, but I want to pray. Let's pray first, shall we? Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for those little interruptions from the Holy Spirit that helps us to know that we are still yours, that you are still with us. Lord, we give you thanks for um, claiming us as your beloved children. Lord, we are your children first and foremost. Our mamas might have given us birth and might have held us and nurtured us. Our daddies were involved too, and what a blessing that is. Lord, we give you thanks for those moms and dads um, who weren't a biological part of our family. Lord, I know that my mama wasn't the only one that raised me, but it was with the help of many, many others. Even some of those, those women and men in the church got a part in raising me. Lord, help us to raise up some children for you. Help us to raise up that next generation that, that doesn't know who you are yet. May they come to know you through our love, through our nurturing, and through our care. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we come to the time for the offering, an opportunity to give back to the mission and the ministry of this year church. There's several ways you can give. If you're, because you're here, there's an offering plate in the back. Of course, if you're a visitor, don't worry about that. Um, our church folks are going to take care of this thing we call ministry. A couple of ways they, they give. Um, you can send a check to the church office, which is 838 North 25th Street, Fort Dodge, Iowa. If you live locally, you can drop off a check Monday through Friday mornings, 9 to 12. Someone will always be here 9 to 12. Or you can call the church office and set up an automatic gift or an automatic giving. And the church office phone number is 515-573-3519.
Lots of ways to get connected, lots of ways to be a part of the church, support the mission and the ministry of this, your church. Let's take some time, though, now to give thanks to God, shall we? Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day, for the blessings that it holds. We give you thanks for the scriptures that tell us that you're going to be with us, that you want us to belong to something more than just ourselves. You want us to belong to this community of faith, this family of faith. It's through this family connection in this community that we are nurtured and that we nurture others. Lord, what a blessing that is to know that we're not doing this on our own, but that there are others willing to join us in this journey. What a blessing it is to know that you are in charge of this journey. And for that, we give you thanks. Lord, you are the love, the unimaginable love that we have known of your care since we were babies, babies in our mother's arms. We've been told about your stories of love, and we've sung your songs about your actions and your deeds. These things, they comfort us. What challenges us might be that commandment from Jesus, as I have loved you, so you should love one another. Not just those who think as we do, or pray as we do, or look at the way we do. Lord, help us through our giving, and through our living, and through our loving. Live up to the challenge of loving as you would have us love. It's in the name of the risen Savior we pray. Amen. Would you join in our next hymn? It's hymn number 445. Happy the home when God is there. 445. you have been chosen to go into this world with a message of God's love, bear fruit of hope and joy, peace and justice with everyone you meet. May God's peace be with you all. Amen. Our final hymn is uh, Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, hymn number 57. Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing.
set the rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like sick. 